What can public roads tell us about the urgency of trustworthiness in democracies? What can public roads tell us? Well, the distinction I drew was between a public road and a toll road. With a toll road, you can always get the road paid for because you don't let anybody on the road who hasn't paid for it. You build a public road, anybody can use it. So how do you get that road paid for? That's a problem that people have been facing since the beginning of time. And the answer is you have to have some form of coercion. You have to have legitimate coercion. The best coercion is legitimate coercion. And democracy is our best answer to the production of legitimate coercion. So having established that, I then wanted to draw some distinctions between kinds of democracy and kinds of representation in particular. One form of representation I painted as being representation based on the trustworthiness of the representative, that that representative is going on an inner gyroscope and will always have that, their particular vision of the public good in mind. Another form of democracy is based on um, sanctions, the desire to be re-elected on the part of the representative, and the representative's only doing what the representative is doing in order to get re-elected. So Denmark, I think, has the first kind of democracy, a democracy based quite heavily on representatives who can't be trusted. It's got, it's amazingly um, the country with the least corruption in the world, tied for the least corruption in the world, according to the Transparency uh, Index, and um, it's also got the most trust in its national parliament of any country in Europe. So D Denmark has this form of representation based on the inner trustworthiness of the representatives, very little corruption. But it has, and it should keep them. And what we need now is innovation in democracy to see how when you've got that kind of representation, which is a difficult achievement, its problems are that the representatives become more distant from the people. They get involved in the work they're doing. They, um, they're not as responsive. The citizenry, having elected them, sort of doesn't care anymore. Those are the key, that's the underbelly, that those are the key problems in a democracy such as the one in Denmark. And um, the answer is not to throw it over and go to a democracy based on sanctions, but to innovate and to try to understand, try to invent. Denmark's in a perfect spot to invent new forms of democracy, new citizen groups, new forms of using the internet, communication, other ways of taking the trust-based form of democracy, but then adding to it some innovative ways of getting uh, citizen uh, responsiveness and communication back and forth.